الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله تبارك وتعالى ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين الحمد لله رب العالمين after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we reflect on the saying of the Prophet that sheds light upon the relationship between us believers regardless of who we are, where we live, or what language we speak. And Nu'man bin Bashir radiallahu anhu reports that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the parable of the believers in their affection, mercy, and compassion for each other is that of a body. When any limb aches, the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever. Dear honorable respected brothers and sisters, may Allah's peace, mercy, and blessing be upon us all. Today, with a very heavy heart, we reflect on the Turkey, Syria earthquake. Over 20,000 people have lost their lives, martyrs in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shuhada. Many more are injured, approximately 60 to 100,000. Major tremors and aftershocks, millions left homeless. Men, women, and children are enduring freezing temperatures without electricity, water, and heat. We have seen the devastating images and read about the destruction. For a second, imagine ourselves in that state. What would we do? How would we cope? Imagine being buried under a building for 50 hours, not knowing if help will come. Imagine losing loved ones or not knowing their fate. Imagine living in the cold, no running water, no heat, no electricity, no roof, and the list goes on. It may be hard for us to imagine, but this is the reality of our brothers and sisters in Turkey and Syria. I will try to explore why calamities happen and what our response should be. But before I do, a disclaimer. In the time that I have, I will be barely touching upon the topic. I definitely can't do justice to it. Much more can be said in a better way and by much better people than me. So forgive me in advance for my shortcomings. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim God Almighty, we acknowledge that we have no knowledge except that which you have given us. You are all-knowing, all-wise. First, we as Muslims, are we surprised that this happened? Absolutely not. Are we devastated? Yes. But surprised? No. The Quran has many verses concerning the nature of the world, including its trials and tribulations. God Almighty tells us 
And indeed, we will test you with fear, with hunger, with the loss of wealth and the loss of souls. وَبَشِّرِ sabirin And give glad tidings to the patient ones. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً Those who when affliction befalls them, قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ They say, truly we belong to Allah and to Him we return. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ They are those upon whom the blessings and compassion from the Lord descend, and they are those who are rightly guided. The Qur'an through verses prepare us to expect afflictions. The adversities are designed to shake us from our heedlessness. When our expectations align with reality, we are able to respond positively with the remembrance of God, with reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in total submission to the will of God Almighty. We respond by spending the wealth that has been entrusted to us by God. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hour shall not come until knowledge is taken away and earthquakes become common. In the Islamic tradition, we recognize that tribulations wake us from our heedlessness. Ghafla can rip apart our soul. Pain and suffering is the teacher that reminds us of our Creator. If we have patience in tribulation and gratitude in blessing, our sight is set on God. We will be good in this world and we will be better in the hereafter. However, if we fail to raise our eyes to the heavens and we seek answers from our ego, from this secular, selfish, confused, and cold modern world, we will be disappointed. Desperation will overwhelm us and lead us to despair. The Prophet ﷺ taught us how wondrous are the affairs of the believers. Verily, all of their affairs are good, and that is for no one except the believers. When they are given a blessing, they are grateful, and the blessing is good for them. And if they are afflicted with anything harmful, such as calamities, they show patience, and thus the patience is better for them. This confirms the belief that we, in essence, belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our bodies, our souls, our wealth, and all matter are God's dominion. The Qur'an tells us that Allah will test us. Glad tidings are for those that accept this reality and respond with patience. They are the rightly guided. May God Almighty include us in them. The human response to Allah's absolute and all-encompassing sovereignty is to glorify and to worship Him. Ya ayyuhan nas, antumul fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyyul hamid. O people, it is you who stand in need of God. Allah needs nothing and is worthy, worthy of all praise. So is there a reminder for all of humanity in this earthquake? This earthquake is a reminder to be in a state of his remembrance. Forgetfulness is not an option. For people of contemplation and deep thought, this week has been a shift from I to us. Today, the focus is on the need of others. We are all in need of constant reminders. The Quran tells us, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind, for the reminder benefits the believer. This is an age of forgetfulness and sadness, and we need remembrance and joy. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضْ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ظَنْكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, whoever turns aside from remembering me, he shall have a miserable life. The state of ghafla, of forgetfulness, is recognized as the source of every sin. 
And the first step in overcoming it has to be the prophetic teaching of Muhasaba. It is to call ourselves to account before we are called to account. Self-accountability allows us to see our shortcomings and seek forgiveness. We believers must stop and analyze the state of our souls. How much have we given into our desires? The love of wealth has polluted our relationship with our Lord and fellow human beings. The journey to repentance starts with self-accountability. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the gift of tawbah for all of us here and for all the Muslims around the world. What can we practically do today as British Muslims, people living in Cambridge? First, we have the spiritual responsibility to pray for those that have passed away. Those that are injured, we must pray for those that are traumatized and those that are providing assistance physically on the ground. We have the social responsibility to financially help. We must donate as much as we can, as often as we can, to provide support and assistance based on our capacity. There's also a political responsibility for those with power to drive change. People are in dire need of immediate assistance and inshallah, we as a community will do our part. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah is in the aid of his servant as long as his servant is in the aid of others. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reports that the Messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever relieves the hardship of a believer in this world, Allah will relieve his hardship on the day of resurrection. And whoever helps ease one in difficulty, Allah will make it easy for him in this world and in the hereafter. Allah helps the servant as long as he helps his brother. We must also acknowledge the Jalal and the Jamal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the majesty and the beauty of God Almighty. All power and all might belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is in no need of us and we are perpetually in need of Him. Every second, every breath, every opportunity, every, every blessing that we possess is a mercy and a gift from God Almighty. We must develop a positive yet realistic mindset. We do not have the ability to stop calamities. Our responsibility is to respond to them in the correct way. We must strive, we must work, we must spend, we must pray, and we must do everything that is in our capability. And then we hand our affairs to our Creator. The Prophet says that if the hour were to arrive and you have a sapling in your hand, plant it. May God Almighty utilize us to better the human condition. May He allow us to help alleviate the strain and suffering of those impacted. Next, we must have a positive opinion of God. Nothing happens in the universe without the knowledge, will, and wisdom of its Creator. Earthquakes, like many natural disasters, are part and parcel of the divine plan. We must see the mercy in it. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, My ummah is an ummah that has God's mercy upon it. They experience the punishment in this worldly life rather than the hereafter. Also, people of faith are resilient people. The prophets were tested the most. When calamity strikes, it's not time to become weak or negative. Rather, it is time to recapture and revive the spirit to, to thrive and to grow under harsh conditions and return to our Lord, knowing that we did our best, we lived our best life, and we did the best we can for others. We also need to acknowledge the possibility 
that our sins and our crimes may be the reasons of some calamities. We have exploited this earth, we have polluted it, we have drilled it, and we have depleted the rainforests, all in the name of greed and amassing an obnoxious amount of wealth. And this wealth is concentrated in the hands of very few people to the detriment of the vast majority. The poorest are the greatest victims of natural disasters such as earthquakes. How did humanity become so selfish? How did we become so heartless? We were designed to overcome such despicable qualities. We are supposed to be stewards of this earth. We must treat the planet, the environment, the, and the people in a positive and a caring manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the compassion and empathy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I conclude with this hadith. Abdullah ibn Amr reported the Messenger of Allah said, the merciful will be shown mercy by the most merciful. Be merciful to those on the earth and the one in the heavens will have mercy upon you. May the Almighty grant us the love of one another. May we embody the prophetic vision of a merciful brotherhood and sisterhood. May He give us the love of service to Islam, to Muslims, and to all of humanity. And may peace, mercy, and God's blessing be upon each and every one of you. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وقال الله تبارك وتعالى واتقوا الله ويعلمكم الله إن الله بكل شيء عليم وقال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وهمزة وسد الله وأسد رسوله رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذمة الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اصلح أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اهد أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا لا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا اللهم اشرح صدورنا للإسلام 
ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقيموا الصلاة